I wonder how deep the... See that huge shield? It's part of the power system. Lightning provides a substantial amount of Neon's energy. Got anything you need to offload? Trade authorities always buy. Kiosk. Anything I can help you with? I'm sure you can find... Checkpoint again. Let's let them do their job so we can move along. See that huge shield? It's part of the power system. Lightning provides a substantial amount of neon's energy. Looking to get zoned? Yeah, you know, dusted, blazed, frosted, hi. If you aren't here to buy some Aurora, then what the heck do you want? Really? You're just gonna blurt it out like that? Good God. Since it's obvious you're the rook that Delgado sent, I'm gonna save both of us some time. Turn around, fly back to the key, and tell the big boss that I'm in no mood to screw around. We'll make this deal when he starts taking me seriously. Come on, give me a break. You're not exactly a top dog over there at the key, now are you? Sending me a rook to handle a job this risky is a goddamn insult. Specifics, huh? Okay, fine. I spent the last three months setting up this job, burned two contacts and a hell of a lot of credits. The whole time, I'm also keeping Bayou off our backs. That idiot even catches a whiff of money and he latches onto you like a damn leech. I've dealt with Bayou in the past. He's got a clear set of gold, I'll give you that. All right, all right, I get the point. Let's just get this over with. I don't have a ton of time to stand here and screw around, so I'm gonna make this as clear as possible. You want the conduction grid tech, then you're gonna have to download it from the power core of Jennerdyne's facility in the underbelly. Some fancy name the brain trusted Jennerdyne calls the room where all the power from the conduction grid is stored. Cute, right? Hey, don't look at me. I didn't build the damn thing. All I know is that the tech inside the place is valuable. <laughs> Beneath your feet, genius. It's the lowest level of neon. Jennerdyne and Xenofresh are down there, along with some of the finest cuisine in the city. I'm talking about Jennerdyne's main power plant for neon. <laughs> All their cushy offices might be up in the trade tower, but the nuts and bolts of their operation are running beneath the city. Love the confidence. But before you pull the ripcord, I'm afraid I need to add a bit of a wrinkle. While you're inside Jennerdyne, 
I need you to plant a virus into their system. It's a simple side job that'll earn you some credits. I think you can handle it. <laughs> the elevator doesn't exactly go to the top floor in that head of yours, does it? Everything in the Crimson Fleet is accomplished through a decent helping of give and take. As in, I'm not going to give you the information to get your precious data unless you take this virus and upload it like I asked. Well, well, look at you. You're smarter than I thought. Jennerdine has all sorts of tasty, valuable snacks in their databanks, and I want access. Here, take this microdrive and access the computer in Brayson Bayou's office. It'll do the rest on its own. It might be wireless, but you aren't going to be able to use it from here, genius. Jennerdine's got their place locked down tight. But, as usual, the weak link comes from the people that work there. I recommend you start with Ayumi Komiko, an upper-level exec at Jennerdine. Get your hands on her security pass, and you'll have the run of the place. Ryujin Cloud doesn't mean shit at Jennerdine. So you're gonna have to deal with Komiko and potentially her boyfriend, Benjamin Bayou. Anyway, you can find Komiko at Euphorica. Talk to the owner of the place, Micah. She'll point you in the right direction. As for dealing with Komiko herself, she's got an office in the Trade Tower if you're looking for something incriminating. The rest is up to you, Rook. When you're done, come meet me at the VIP booth in the Astral Lounge so we can celebrate. Not much to tell, really. Thanks to their nifty little conduction grid, they're able to provide power for the entirety of Neon. Damn thing was supposed to be some kind of miracle invention, turning lightning into usable electricity. Neat trick, right? Only catch is that you need a planet like Voli, where lightning strikes often enough to make it feasible. Guess how many of those exist? Ding! If you said zero, you're absolutely correct. So Jennerdine has been in dire financial straits for years. Loaning them credits? No, that's not how things work around here. The only reason they haven't folded is because they charge exorbitant fees for power. I'm talking two or three times what it costs in New Atlantis. Okay, now, on to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all that delicious profit? Not a single one. In fact, there are no legal alternatives for anything in this godforsaken city. The only thing people can do is deal with the bullshit and try to get on with their miserable lives. But let's get back to round two of our little game. Guess who has a major stake in Jennerdine and soaks up all its delicious profit? Ooh, not even close. The answer you were looking for isn't another corporation. It's a person. It's good old Benny Bayou. That son of a bitch has a finger in every single pie in the sorry excuse for a city. Jennerdine's no different. All off the books, of course. How the hell do you think Brayson Bayou got the job down there? It wasn't because of his good looks or smarts. I can promise you that. Pretty laid back club over in Ebside. Owner's name is Micah. She's young but sharp as a razor, and has gang muscle to back her up. The little Aurora lounge she has tucked away in the building is the real gold mine. Said she modeled it after opium dens on old earth. Bayou takes a cut of the profits, of course. The rumor says it's way less than he usually takes. No one knows why. Nepotism gets him the job at Jennerdine as their chief technician. Yet the guy doesn't know the first thing about electrical engineering. They obviously invented the position just to give them more on a salary. One of the many poorly kept secrets of Neon. Frankly, I think he's such a screw-up. Benjamin Bayou stuck his ass in that facility under the city to keep him out of the limelight.
businesswoman, tough as whole plating. She's the COO at Jennerdine, and I can assure you she didn't get there with her winning smile. As for her relationships, well, that's a bit more complicated. Publicly, she's having a bit of a fling with Benjamin Bayou, but rumor has it that she's just using Bayou and having a little bit of fun on the side with Micah, the owner of Euphorica. If I were you, I wouldn't bother trying to appeal to her good nature. She's a manipulative person who uses people to get what she wants. Watch your step. Benjamin Bayou has eyes everywhere. Take it easy. Benjamin Bayou's Tower. What? It's big, all right. Not sure what else it is. <laughs> the Astral Lounge spared no expense with their marketing, huh? Hey, you might want this. Yeah, what? Is this important? I'm really busy right now. Let me save you some time. If you're here for a job, we're not hiring. If you're here about the conduction grid tour, we shut it down a year ago. Good. If you were, you'd be the twelfth person I've turned away this year. What a waste. Look, I'm sorry if I'm blowing up at you, but I've got a ton of problems and no time to deal with them all. I'm afraid that things aren't going terribly well around here. I don't care if I'm allowed to or not. I'm happy to get this off my chest. The conduction grid went online almost 75 years ago. And since then, we haven't developed a single groundbreaking innovation. At this point, the money we're taking in as a power utility barely covers the waste that's going on in the research and development division. You'd think that, right? The problem is that Brayson Bayou, Administrator Bayou's brother, is currently heading up the R&D division. I swear to you, the man doesn't know the first thing about power systems or electromagnetic technology. Of course there are. But so far, Brayson has suppressed most of their work through pure jealousy. Look, I'm running out of options. No one above me seems to care what's going on, but I'm willing to take a chance. I have a full report on Brayson that I want to send to Administrator Bayou, but I don't know if he can be trusted. What do you think I should do? It describes my aggravation with how badly Brayson Bayou is running the Research and Development Division. I'm also including a list of all the failed experiments he's greenlit, and how much they've cost Genodyne as proof of his incompetence. I'm praying someone as financially successful as Administrator Bayou might be able to put aside his ego and look at this from a business perspective. Now, you know what? You're absolutely right. I've heard Bayou's killed people for doing less. What the hell was I even thinking? Hey, look. Thanks for helping me out with this. It's been on my mind for a long time. If there's anything else you need, any questions at all, feel free to ask. As long as it doesn't get me into serious trouble, ask away. Whoa. Okay, that's crossing the line. I can't discuss company matters like this. Maybe... Need to think about it.
Yeah, I hope so. You're starting to make a lot of sense. Okay, listen. You didn't hear this from me, but I know she's up to something with Benjamin Bayou. He was in her office a few weeks ago, and they had some kind of shouting match. It got really heated until Bayou stormed out the door. I don't know what it was about, but I happen to know Miss Komiko keeps audio recordings of all her meetings in her safe. And before you ask, yes, I'll unlock it for you. Just don't tell anyone I helped, okay? Because I'm sick and tired of the corruption that's running through this city. People around here spend half their lives terrified about being backstabbed and spend the rest of it planning on how they're going to screw over someone else. Something rotten is going on in this company, and one day, I hope to find out what it is. I've only been working here for a few years now, and she's been my boss the entire time. Well, the big boss is our CEO, Mr. Harada. But I've actually never met him. He lives somewhere in New Atlantis, I think. Uh, she's my boss. She's fine, I guess. Look, like I said, I don't want to get into serious trouble. She might be a bit tough on all of us, but being responsible for Neon's power grid is a very stressful position. Sometimes that stress trickles down. Sure, sure, no problem. Hope to see you again soon. Are you lost? Oh, I used to be an actuary. Now look at Gonna let me work, or are you gonna keep bothering? Hey, you might want this. Space in the members' lounge today. You people should leave her alone. What do you want with her? Yeah, sure. Tell me another one. You debt collectors are low life assholes. She's broke, okay? Now get out of my club before I get really pissed off and have you thrown into the street. It's nothing personal, friend. The... the Crimson Fleet? Oh my, I'm sorry. I had no idea. I didn't mean anything by it, really. Sorry, I just... Well, I worry about her. Ayumi owes a lot of money around town. I'm trying to help her out. But, you know... I have a business to keep afloat. If you want to talk to her, you can find her in the member's lounge. Of course, access to the lounge is going to cost you. 
and I'm not changing my mind about that. Excellent. Then here is your access key. Please let us know if anything in the lounge interferes with your comfort. Now sit back, relax, and unwind. Haven't seen a leech in a while. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, you must be zoned out of your mind, because there's no way anyone sober would say something like that. How the hell did you find that? It was Estelle Vincent, wasn't it? That bitch. I knew I should have kept that somewhere else. Here, take this pass. It should get you through the storage room entry to the facility. I'm warning you, though. Once you're inside, you're trespassing in a high security zone. That means they shoot on sight. Good luck. You're going to need it. If you had to work with Brayson Bayou, you'd understand. The man is still a totally incompetent fool, and he's running our company into the ground. The worst part of it is that he's Administrator Bayou's brother. So I can't fire him. I can't reassign him. I can't even yell at him. It's like having a cut on your body and you're helplessly watching yourself bleed to death. Except in our case, we're hemorrhaging money. I suppose if I don't explain, a copy of that recording you found might end up on the next SSNN report. Okay. Fair enough. A few years back, the previous CEO of Genardine went missing. As the COO, I was next in line for the job. Instead, Bayou muscled his way into the company and gave me an ultimatum. Either back up his bullshit Mr. Harada identity, or I'm gone. I had no choice. But I decided right then and there, I was going to do whatever I could to take what was rightfully mine. If that meant seducing Bayou to tip him off balance, then so be it. Luckily for me, Mike has been incredibly understanding about the whole thing. What do you think happened? Bayou started sticking his nose into Jennerdine's business. All but outright demanding a cut of the profits. In response, the CEO made a huge mistake by threatening to take his grievances to the FC. His shuttle never arrived. Need I say more? No, oh, we're polar opposites. But we share a unique bond. Micah is the only person in this godforsaken city that's kept me from going completely under. She doesn't want money doesn't use me for influence or as a stepping stone to get ahead. She loves me for being me, and I love her for being the same. And when this stupid bullshit is over, and Bayou is ten fathoms deep under Neon, we'll be there for each other. Forever. What is this? A job interview? I'm the COO of the company, second to the top. Right under our esteemed CEO, Mr. Harada. Also known as Benjamin Bayou. So when you ask me what I do for Jennerdine, the answer is nothing. The Bayous run the show, and I tread water. The salary helps, of course, but... At the end of the day, I'm just a joke. Sitting in an office to make things look... legitimate. Keeps them off the Freestar Collective's radar. They might actually step in if they discover that the same person controlling the city's regulations and bylaws benefits financially from them. If you haven't figured it out by now, Benjamin has a stranglehold on the city. You can't take a piss without him charging you after flush. Try and get in his way, and then he uses Neon Security to beat you senseless, or the Sioga Syndicate to make you disappear. If you get caught in Jennerdine, that's on you. 
Good luck. Yes, what? Hey, Captain. Can I talk with you for a bit? You know, I needed this. Exploring the galaxy with you by day, investigating the mysterious legal woes of my long-dead spouse by night. Vasco never appreciated my humor that much. Hmm. I was just remembering how I'd pour my heart out to Vasco. So many times. I told him all about Irvin. He showed me a chart of how sad I should expect to feel. He was really hoping the visual presentation would help. It did not. Why not? Trust me, I've talked to way less sentient humans before. Vasco's just fine for most conversations. Sure, folks from the Lodge, folks from my past. I've got friends when and where I need them. But traveling with you has been different. We're more of a team. It feels stronger. Oh, we got to point B many times just fine. Top-notch co-pilot. Would recommend him to anybody. Anyway, I'm glad you're here right now because we have things to discuss about Irvin's case. I heard back from my contact. They looked into Hephaestus Mining Corporation. Looks like they paid off the judge. And that's not all. My contact really came through for us. Turns out the witness was threatened until he withdrew his testimony. And thanks to our contact, we now have the receipts. No, my contact does for now. I trust them. We worked together a long time ago. And it depends on what I want to do with all the proof. If anything. Bank transactions. A precise amount was transferred to the judge only the day before the ruling. My contact has an audio log with the identity of the speaker verified, time-stamped, everything. I tend to agree. It's interesting. I'm not enough to take it to a lawyer yet. So I know a cyber runner who has accessed corporate archives before? They can dig into the classified archives before we go to a lawyer. We can pay extra for them to use less legal methods to obtain information, but that adds risk. I don't know. I guess that's a good question for a lawyer. I appreciate that, Captain. But I'll take care of any fines or bribes that come up from this. You have always been so supportive of me during this process. Let me take care of this part. Depending on what they find out, it might be time to talk to a lawyer. I'll see if I can find one. Whew. Taking on Hephaestus isn't going to be easy. And I say this as someone who's fought the Crimson Fleet. Maybe I should study up on the art of cross-examination. Might come in handy at the trial. Objection, Your Honor. I think our lawyer in Gagarin is the right choice. Ha! Hoisted by my own petard. I better get to study my legalese. Anyway, let's go adventure while we wait on the cyber runner to get back to us. Yeah.
Here's where the magic happens. And by magic, I mean creating Aurora out of fish guts, I guess. Everybody works the best when they're scared and tired, right? hole in the ceiling. Amazing.
this, but I am. Please, don't shoot. If you want the encryption cipher, you're, you're welcome to it. There's no need for all this violence. <laughs> no, no catch. I I'm not trying to trick you. You want the cipher, it it's yours. At this point, I'd do anything to get back at my brother. He deserves everything he's got coming to him. I think you could safely say that most of Neon would agree. You know, I've spent my entire life living in Ben's shadow. Everything always works out for him. While, I, while I've been bouncing from one job to the next, barely keeping afloat. And all the while, he laughs at me behind my back. <laughs> Thinks it's hilarious to make fun of his, his stupid brother. Like I wouldn't eventually find out. Sounds like what old Benjamin needs is a good punch in the nose.
One advantage to being perceived as stupid is that no one takes you seriously. When I walk into a party, I'm instantly the resident social pariah. But my eyes and ears are wide open. I can't tell you the number of times I've overheard that my brother has spread amusing anecdotes about his stupid brother. That wouldn't do any good. For every scheme he's gotten himself into, he has a bulletproof exit strategy. The man's virtually immortal. He's been able to avoid consequences so far, but this could be the end of it. You know what? I am sick to death of being pushed around. It's my turn to take control for once. The passcode for my terminal is GEN-41A18. That should give you access to the cipher and whatever else you need. I'm getting out of here while I still can. After you're done, I suggest you do the same. Because he's a two-faced son of a bitch, that's why. That's not like I should be surprised. When we were younger, we never got along very well. I mean, he's 11 years older than I am. We had two different mothers. Might as well have been from two separate families. <laughs> Most normal families, sure. But mine was anything but normal. I never knew my actual mother. She was my father's mistress. And I was told she vanished from Neon when I was only two years old. Ben's mother, she didn't give a crap about me. Wouldn't even let me call her mom. I just had to call her Liliana. <laughs> Can you imagine? And then there's Dad. So buried in the day-to-day -day operations of Neon, he didn't have time to pay attention to his bastard son. Yeah. Everyone's sorry. Just as sorry as I am. Look, I appreciate what you're trying to do. And, and it's nice to get this off my chest, but talking about it isn't going to change a thing. That's why I gave you the encryption cipher. Anything I could do to stick it to Ben, that's the real therapy. As usual, you can thank my dear brother for that. At first, he made me deputy administrator. That went well, until I wouldn't cooperate with Owen Dexler and all of his thugs at Neon Security. Then he had me work with Valentina over at Xenofresh, helping with Aurora distribution, until she pinned a credit skimming scam on me. And now, here I am, chief technician at Jennerdyne. I don't even know the first thing about electrical engineering. On a scale of one to ten, one being the worst, I'm at about, I don't know, a negative eight. I don't have the background for this electrical engineering stuff. Chief technician? It's, it's ridiculous. Ben stuck me down here, expecting me to work miracles. He didn't stop for even a second to think of the repercussions. That's so typical. All I need is one breakthrough, one, and I could shove this job right in his face. Damn, that would feel good. Of course, the storage tech that Dr. Corbin came up with. How could I miss that? Jennerdyne could make a fortune selling those to outposts for power collection purposes. It's perfect. Thank you for giving me that kick in the ass I needed to get going. Feels good to be in control for a change.
have something for you. What's on your mind? I do, actually. Here you go. kept you. I believe we have a lot to discuss. It's obvious you're here to meet someone. Fortunately for them, they rented this VIP room under a false name. I assume that same someone provided you with that clever little virus you installed into Genodyne systems. Well, yes. You didn't think your little foray into Genodyne would go completely undetected, did you? All too well. You know, I should give credit where it's due. That virus is quite impressive. It will cost me tens of thousands of credits to remove. That's the last time I'll ever take the Crimson Fleet's capabilities for granted. Because, like the majority of revenue-generating businesses in the city, I have a vested interest in Jennerdine's profits. But more importantly than simply losing money, I don't like anything in my city being interfered with without my approval. Probably. But do you want to know why that's not going to happen? It's because I don't negotiate with pirates. They don't understand commitments or contracts. How to get the deal done with finesse. No. For your kind, it's only brute force and violence. Shoot first, take whatever you want, and ask questions later. That's not how I do business. It may seem that way, but for every rival I've had thrown into the ocean, I've made two times as many legitimate deals. Look, I'm not here to debate. I'm here to make an offer. All you have to do is tell me who's profiting from the virus you've uploaded. In return, I'll let you leave the city alive. I've always appreciated that you get right to the point, Bayou. You don't have to worry about that in the least. You point me to our little mole, and I'll do the rest. You don't even have to get your hands dirty. My dear friend, you couldn't possibly offer me enough money to offset the embarrassment that this has caused. I'm afraid you'll just have to reveal your source. Really. That's the story you're going with. Very well. There's a body that Neon Security is going to be discovering very soon. One with concrete evidence that links you to the murder. I'd say you have about one hour to leave this place before you have a price on your head. Murder? <laughs> Even for you, that is remarkably a low, Bayou. You must be very, very worried. So, I assume this concludes our little arrangement, and you'll be leaving our fair city. Oh, when you get back to the key, be certain to give Neva and Delgado my warmest regards.
Scram, I'm on duty. Glad you're back. Sorry about the whole Benjamin Bay you think at the Astral Lounge, but I didn't have much of a choice. Can you believe the nerve of that smug son of a bitch? The man is priceless. <laughs> so I've heard. Throwing yourself under the bus like that. Ouch. You are one crazy son of a bitch. Yeah, I'm pretty much dead in the water at this point. Since Bayou flagged the virus, I can't risk accessing the system now. All that work I did trying to crack Jennerdine is gone. Now I'm in a bit of a bind. The prep work for this job put me in deep for a bunch of cash and I have no way to pay it all back. Well, a business partner of mine named Nix was the author of the virus. Don't know if you know him or not. Then there's the folks I paid to keep an eye on Ayumi Komiko, a few of the guards Jennerdine. Like I said, it was a huge job. Honestly, I shouldn't be revealing my sources because that puts you on their radar as well. But hey, you asked. That's pretty cool of you to offer, but I know what he's gonna say. Sorry, Estelle. This was your scheme. You're on your own. Believe me, he's not going to be much help. Look, I was hoping you'd pick up on what I was trying to ask. What the hell with it? I'll just ask. Can you cut me in for a little bit of cash you're making on this job? I mean, I did get you inside and practically hand you the data on the grid. Sounds reasonable enough to me. I appreciate that. I really do. Having each other's back is what makes the fleet stronger, you know? How much uh, are you willing to part with? Wow, that's way more than I expected. I had no idea you'd be so generous. The squeaky wheel gets the grease, that's for sure. Thanks for all your help. All right, I guess we're done here. Tell Delgado if he ever needs me for anything else. I've still got his back. And hey, you won't be hearing Rook from me anymore. As far as I'm concerned, you're one of us now. Lifeblood of the fleet. If anyone tries to tell you otherwise, you send them to talk to me. Now, how did I know you were gonna ask me that? Honestly, it doesn't matter if I believe that Crix's legacy exists or not. What's important is that I believe in Delgado. If the man thinks that chasing shadows is gonna make us rich, then who the hell am I to judge, right? I mean, I'm not going to jump off a cliff for him or anything, but hey, he needs an extra ship at his side. He's got it. I hear things are heating up back at the quay, so I might fire up my bird and head over to check things out. Rumor has it that Delgado has some solid info on the Crix's legacy story he's been hawking for the last few years. If there's even a chance that it's true, I want to be there when Shinya Voss starts splitting the loot, if you catch my meaning. Completely ruined? Nah. I was hoping it would stay on Jennerdine's mainframe for the long term, but hey, at least it's already fed me a huge amount of data. Nix really knows what he's doing, though he charged me about six months worth of earnings. With any luck, I'll be able to recoup my costs in no time. Just watch your ass. Benny isn't exactly going to be tickled that you've been talking to his brother. 
Full of a gel, love a dream. All hell's breaking loose, Rook. Delgado needs you in the repair bay with Jazz as soon as possible. Oh, it's bad. Real bad. Delgado will fill you in with the details. Now get your ass to the repair bay. Go! Go! 